Shalom, Israel. This is Judah J. So while I was reading the sixth book of Joshua, uh, verses 13 through 23, what stood out was the method in which the children of Israel used in order to take down the city of Jericho, um, in order to take down their enemies. The method was wrought in um, a spirit of wisdom, order, honor, and praise. And I believe that that's the same um, the same posture that the children of Israel should have in these last days in our captivity before we are called out of our captivity. What I'm also going to show you are the two different outcomes that the children of Israel uh, went through, one positive and one negative, as they were trying to find direction as to the path that they were supposed to go. We'll take a look at Joshua, the sixth chapter, but also this, the fifth chapter, at the end of the fifth chapter, to show this order and to show how having revelation from the Most High Yah will guide you through, um, through the challenges that you face in this world. But if you do not have that revelation from the Most High or that direction, that wisdom that comes from his throne, then you will be in error and you will fall. So in this um, example that I'll use, I'm going to discuss the fall of the Israelites in 70 AD and how they were led by wicked priests which showed, which told them that it was actually safe for them to stay in Israel when the Most High Yah was actually telling them that they had to, they had to depart from Israel because of their sins. But they had wicked priests that were put set over them, which clouded their judgment and did not allow for them to receive the revelation from the Most High Yah. This is the importance of having right priests that guide you. Now, in, in Joshua 6, you will see that the priest of the Most High went before them as they circled the land of Jericho, blowing the horns in front of the Ark of the Covenant with the army behind them. And on the seventh day, the city fell. But this is only because they only received this uh this the understanding of what the of the order that they should have and the method in which they should go about taking down the city because they were in right standing with the most high israel was coming out of the wilderness experience sojourning in the wilderness for 40 years before they got to this place of uh be coming into the promised land uh there was only two people that um uh, that lived from that 40 year experience to come into the promised land, which was Jacob and Caleb. And the rest of those generations had passed away. So Israel had now at the end of that 40 years got to a place where they were uh, resolute to serve the most high in spirit and in truth. They were gonna obey his commandments. They were walking in righteousness. They were uh, giving him honor by the way they lived, not just by the things they said, they got away from sin. And so as that happened, it took 40 years because the Most High was not going to allow people into the promised land that were not worthy to be in the promised land. So this this took a process. And that's also in you know correlation of our people now. The Israelites are looking to be uh, delivered from their uh, the places of bondage here in Babylon and all over the world. But what we have not decided to do is turn away from our sins and to obey the Most High Yah's commandments. We still want to hold on to the things of this world because this is all we know. And we're still um, enamored by uh, the gifts and all of the, the things, the, 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 uh, the mirages that Satan has put before our eyes. So the byproduct of living in sin is a people that will not have correct direction. They will not have a correct guide that's sent, that's there to lead them and guide them. When we do not obey the Most High Yah, he actually becomes our enemy and he allows our enemies to come into our life either to, if by his mercy, to uh, sort of um, chastise us, to lead us back to him, or he can use them to destroy us. So what we will see here in this example is that you had two situations. One situation back in this time when they when the children of Israel were taking down the city of Jericho they they had priests that were put over them that could hear from the most high because they were in right standing with the most high as we see in 
uh, as we see in Hebrews 5, it talks about what a real priest is, a, a righteous priest. It says that every priest taken from among men is ordained for men and things pertaining to God or pertaining to Yah, that he may offer both gifts and sacrifices for sin. So in order for there to be a priest of this standard, of this moral standing, high standard, you have to have a connection with the Father that will allow for, me, allow for you to receive correct um, um, uh, direction, correct uh, revelation as to the direction in which we are to go. Because you are not in right standing with the Most High, he will allow you to have these wicked uh, these wicked shepherds that will guide you. Now, when you turn back to the Most High, Yah, then he will actually put the shepherds that are from his fold in front of you to guide you. You have two examples of the children of Israel being led by wicked shepherds and and also being led by righteous shepherds. In the first example we have is the children of Israel um, coming out of the wilderness being led by um, uh, Jacob and Caleb, right? That generation had to actually die off before they were able to come into the promised land. And the change occurred when they decided to say, we give up. We will stop trying to use uh, our own means to figure this thing out. We're going to stop trying to live uh, the way you know the world lives. We're going to turn away from that now. We're, we're, we're not going to follow and be enamored by the mirages that Satan and his kingdom give us. In this time frame, we're not going to the club to try to have to pick up women or if you're a woman to pick up a man to have uh, impure relationships, to commit a fornication and adultery, to use um, all sorts of drugs, to do uh, things that, you know, the most high has not called for you to do. And then go to church on Sunday and say that you are saved and sanctified because now you are, you know, in the house, a quote unquote, the house of the most high, when the house of the most high is the temple and we are bought by the price of the, of Christ's blood. So we are to live righteous in our temples to him. That is what we don't do. And that's what we have to do in these last days in order to receive sound um, doctrine from the most high. So because of this new right relationship that the children of Israel had now established with the most high Yah, by obeying his commandments and walking righteously before him, they were able to receive true and correct revelation from the Most High. And they received it in the form of one of his holy angels, a commander of the Lord's army. Um, this this was because of their, their change that had occurred in them through their wilderness experience. It says in uh, Joshua 5, verse 13, now, when Joshua was near Jericho, he looked up and saw a man standing in front of him with a drawn sword in his hand. Joshua approached him and asked, are you for us or are you for our enemies? So, so we have um, a representation here of the Most High Yah now sending uh, reinforcements, so to speak, from the, from 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 his throne, from heaven to come and um, be involved in this battle that Israel will partake of. Now, of course, the, the commander of the Lord's army, he said he's not he's not there for them or their enemies. This was because the children of Israel were not circumcised um, as a whole at this point. So they were uncircumcised before the Most High as they were coming out of the wilderness. Now, of course, when they before they went in the wilderness, they were all circumcised. But now, as time had gone along, the long period of time was 40 years had passed since they had entered to, into the wilderness. Um, now they were uncircumcised. And so because of that, the this this commander of the Lord's army says either he's, he's neither for them nor against them. But as you can further read, it says that the most that Joshua fell face down in reverence and asked him, what does my Lord have to say to his servant? So even though the, the commander of the most high, an angel comes before him and tells him neither, I'm not for you or your enemy. The heart of Joshua was circumcised.
So now we can see a direct correlation between what's going on here and, and the state of our people now. We had been we have been away from um, our true heritage and the following of our true heritage, the ways and the customs and just how we serve the Most High for so long. It was 40 years that the children of Israel sojourned in the wilderness. And in that time frame, they 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 had to suffer much loss, much pain. They went through fear. They didn't know where they were going. The, 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 the promised land was only a little a little um a little ways away, but because of their sin and that 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 connection with the father had been breached because of their sin. So just like us, our sight has been blinded. We live like the world. We do the things the world does. That's all we know. We've been in bondage so long that we don't know the correct posture that we are supposed to have and operate in before the most high. So just like these people, they're now coming back to uh, that correct uh, order that that correct stature, that standard that they're living by that standard the Most High has now called for them to live by. And now they're beginning to receive revelation from the Most High. They're even able now to see the direction he's given them through the form of his commander, his holy commander that comes from it, comes from heaven. So this is in turn with us. So we have to return to the most high. Yah. this shows what happens when we decide to turn away from the things of the world. I keep saying it. Turn away from the things of this world. Put our eyes on the most high. Yah. Stop putting your attention on the things that are of this world. When it comes to uh, getting upset at what your enemy is doing to you, seeing it on the news and, and and just, oh, I'm so angry at these Gentiles and they need to pay. And because where's our reparations and look what they did to us here. Now, of course, you can't be blind to that stuff. That stuff is disheartening. It's, it's horrible. And it's but it's a byproduct of our captivity. If you look at it as this is the judgment that the Most High Yah has put brought down upon us because of the sins of our forefathers. And you look at the bigger picture and you say, these things have to happen in order for us to get to that place that we are going to go with the Most High, in order for us to be restored to being the priest, to be in the head and not to tell, in order to become these people that are re uh, just reinvigorated with that power and that strength that comes from his hand. We have to know that we have to go through this but then there's going to be in the morning, there's joy, there's re there's restoration. You have to walk with that spirit, with that mindset in order to sojourn through this battle. Now, as we go to Joshua chapter six, verse one, I want you to recognize something. It's very important. It talks about how the most high Yah is, is, is creating the environment that's going to be conducive for the children of Israel to be able to overcome their enemies. It says, now Jericho was tightly shut up because of the Israelites. No one went out and no one came in. Now, this is going to be a direct correlation to how the children of Israel actually fell in 670 AD. And as you go to Ecclesiastes uh, 1, 9 and 10, it says the thing that has been, it is that which shall be and that which is done that which shall be done, and there's no new thing under the sun. Is there anything wrong and may be said, see, this is new. It has been already done of old time, which was before us. So the Most High Yah does uh, things in the same order. He does, he repeats things. There's nothing new under the sun. So the method in which he gave uh, the, mo the children of Israel to come out of bondage is actually the same method that was used for the children of Israel to go in bondage in 70 AD as the Romans actually encamped around the children of Israel and no one went out and no one came in. So back here during the, as the, the, the wall of Jericho was about to fall, you're receiving the order. So the children of Israel are being guided by order from the commander of the Most High Yah. And it says in, in chapter and verse two, of Jer Joshua 6, and the Lord said to Joshua, behold, I have delivered Jericho into your hands, along with, it, with its king and its mighty men of valor. Now, I find that amazing because before Israel had ever even fought, they have already gotten the victory. If you see how that is, they have not stepped foot in Jericho. They have not put a, um, raised their hands in battle. They have not raised any swords in battle, but the Most High Yah has already given them the victory. They had been sojourning in the wilderness, getting themselves together, uh, learning how to come back to the Most High Yah, consecrating their flesh, 
turning away from sin. And now they receive this revelation from the commander of the Most High Yah because they had turned away from those things of the world. Now they can receive the revelation. Now they're getting the guidance that they need in order to conquer their enemies. Same thing for us now. When we turn away from our sin, we receive that revelation and now the guidance we need to turn and the strength we need to turn away from our enemies because now we have the power of the Most High behind us. We can't do this thing alone. And so these people, now have already been given the victory without even raising their hands to battle. So this is exactly what we can do in our captivity to come out of our captivity. But the byproduct of that strength and the foundation of that power comes through a consecrated heart that's willing to turn away from sin and obey his commandments and do it daily. This order was characterized as, as it says here, do this for six days. Have seven priests carry seven ram's horns in front of the ark. Then on the seventh day, march around the city seven times while the priest blows the horn. And then when there is a long blast of the ram's horn and you hear it sound, have all the people give a mighty shout. Then the wall of the city will collapse and the people will go up each man straight ahead. So now the children of Israel have this order from the Most High, from his commander, telling them exactly what they, they needed to do to, to conquer this battle. To, to win in this battle and it's 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 structured it's it's righteous it's from the most high you see when the most high a lot of times tells us to do things it, it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense a lot of the times it doesn't follow the structure that the world would say oh that's the way you get this done that's the way you fight the weaponry of our warfare is not carnal but it is for the bringing down of strongholds so these seven priests were, were ordered to carry seven ram's horns in front of the Ark of the Covenant. And if you know, the horns uh, characterize power. So the horns represent power. And they were uh, to carry those horns in front of the Ark of the Covenant, blowing them as they walked in front of the, in front of the Ark of the Covenant. And so that blowing of that trumpet represented power. It showed that there was the children of Israel were coming. They were being led and guided by the Most High. Mm -hmm. And this also, this horn signifies uh, praise. This is also the praise of the Most High. It's showing his dominion. It's showing his uh, complete rulership in any place in which he is, which is everywhere. And so this is uh, signified by this blowing of the horn. This power is now coming to the gates of Jericho. The children of Israel are about to take down their enemies. But see, it, you have to look at this structure that we have before. You have the men of the Most High Yah, the priests that go before the ark, that go before the armies, they go before the people that have the spirit of the Most High Yah that are guided by his, uh, by correct doctrine. So these people, they hear if they have correct revelation from the most high, they lead the people. And now the people can rest assured that they are in right standing and that they have a clear path towards victory because they have righteous men that are leading them. Now you don't have righteous men leading you now in this world, they're bought and paid for by the satanic elite, but there are those that are out here that are doing the work of the Most High. Um, this order was important for the children of Israel to gain victory. And like I said, a lot of the times the Most High doesn't tell us to do things that make sense when it comes to uh, the, 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 the method in which the world would say that's a winning uh, recipe for, for, um, for success. So then on the seventh day, it's, he says, march around the city seven times while the priests blow the horns. And then... There is a long blast of the ram's horn and you hear the sound and have all the people give a mighty shout. Then the wall of the city will collapse and the people will go up each man straight ahead. So we have this order. We have this uh, representation of praise by the horns blasting before the children of Israel come into uh, the land of Jericho to overcome it. And then you also have them obeying the most high. So this this method makes absolutely no sense when it comes to a man. How are we going to take down this city just by walking around it, blowing a horn and carrying this, the carrying the ark? That's probably the normal mindset of a man. The methods in which the Most High tells us to walk by don't always make sense. But when we obey, the city will collapse and people will go up, each man straight ahead. We gain dominion when we take off our our perceptions, when we lean not on our own understanding, but we acknowledge him 
and he will guide our path. And we put that, that, that spirit, that truth of that, that's that, that word. If, as we put that before us, then we gain the victory. That's what the children of Israel need to do now that are awakening to the, who they are. They need to return back to following order in unity and having honor for the most high Yah, putting him before every battle in their life and recognizing and trusting in him, recognizing the power that comes from his hand, recognizing that he'll never leave us nor forsaken us, recognizing that he shall preserve us from all evil forevermore, recognizing that he shall never fail us, recognizing that uh, if he be for us, who can be against us, recognizing that those with rage against us shall be disgraced and ashamed and shall come to nothing and shall perish. When you know that that's the power that's behind you, then you can put your trust in him. You can put your hopes in him and that wall, that that wall of of uh, opposition that's against you in your life. If it be sin or if it just be, um, you know, maybe an enemy that's amongst you that is not of the most high that seeks you to fall. Those things will collapse because of the one that you have in front of you, guiding you, leading you. But now we have to look to the other side. What happens when you don't obey the Most High Yah? What happens when you have wicked rulers, wicked shepherds that are ruling amongst you, wicked priests, that those that say they're priests, those that say they're prophets, guiding the people? What happens when these are the ones that you turn to for your direction? Well, this is exactly what happened in Jerusalem in 70 AD. They were being guided by unrighteous priests, priests that did not have um, the revelation from the Most High Yah. But see, this is what happened to the children of Israel when they decided decided to look to these fake priests, these fake prophets for the revelation. It says in Luke 19, 43, 44, it says, for the days shall come upon you that your enemies, your enemies shall cast a trench about you and compass you or compass you round about and keep you in on every side and you and shall lay you even with the ground and your children with you. And they shall not leave in you one stone upon another, because you know it's not the time of your visitation. This describes what happened to the children of Israel when they fell, when they fell uh, to the Romans in 70 AD. And this is because they did not have uh, correct uh, rulership, correct um, wise counsel from the Most High that was guiding them, just like we do now. Um, as you can see, the same situation happened before. So if you look at it in this way, they were encamped on every side by the Roman captivity. They had leaders and rulers and priests that were not guiding them in righteousness. So now the people were going to suffer because of this. Uh, how much did they suffer? When you have these priests that are not guiding you in the right direction, this is the type of thing that will happen to you. This is the type of thing. Josephus speaks to the of the house to house fighting that occurred. It says and this is the time of 70 AD when we fell. This is under that wicked, uh, the wicked priests that were given us incorrect uh, prophecy from the most high. And this is this is what happened. These Romans put the Jews to flight and proceeded as far as the holy house itself. At which time one of the soldiers, without staying for any orders and without any concern or dread upon him at so great an undertaking, and being hurried on by a certain divine fury, snatched some of what some snatched somewhat of the materials that were on fire. And being lifted up by another soldier, he set fire to a golden window through which there was a passage to the rooms that were round about the holy city, the holy house on the north side of it. As the flames went upward, the Jews made a great clamor, such as so mighty an affliction required, and ran together to prevent it. And now they sp they spared not their lives any longer, nor suffered anything to restrain their force, since that holy house was perishing. Thus it was the holy house burnt down, nor can one imagine anything greater or more terrible than this noise. For there was at once a shout of the Roman legions, who were marching all together, and a sad clamor of the sedacious, who were now surrounded with fire and sword. The people under a great consternation made sad moans at the calamity they were under. Yet was the misery itself more terrible than this or disorder, for one would have thought that the hill itself on which the temple stood was seething hot as full of fire on every part of it. It goes on to say, 
To give a detailed account of their outrageous conduct is impossible, but we may sum it up by saying that no other city has ever endured such horrors, and no generation in history has fathered such wickedness. In the end, they brought the whole, he, they say Hebrew race, but the, they brought the Israelites into contempt in order to make their own impiety seem less outrageous in foreign eyes and confess the painful truth that they were slaves, the dregs of humanity, bastards and outcasts of their nations. Goes on to say, it is certain that when from the upper city, they watched the temple burning, they did not turn a hair, though many Romans were moved to tears. So the children of Israel's calamity was so great that it even moved our very enemies to tears. It moved our enemies to tears to see these great people, these holy people, even though they, they weren't for us, but they knew what we were about and they knew we were righteous people. To see these great people fall in such a manner, perishing and crying out in such a great wail that had never been heard on earth before, seeing their holy temple fall, seeing their, their brethren being destroyed, cut up by the sword, laying destitute on the ground, completely destroyed. This, this power that, that overtook the world was now nothing. So our enemies see us even now and they, they see this as it was spoken here, these slaves, dregs of humanity, bastards and outcasts of a nation. Who are those people on this earth, I asked you? Who represents that, that, that those narratives uh, any better than the Negro, which was spread to the four corners of the earth? We were, of course, the slaves to the, in this world that built up each empire of this world and still in, are in slavery, um, just in a slavery of our, of our mind. And of course, in places in the world, physically enslaved, we are the dregs of humanity, which the most nations of this world look down upon. They see us as nothing, that they are, we are the ones that uh, will prop them up and they move into our communities. They, they buy up everything. They sell to our people. They rip us off. They treat us like trash. But it's because of our fall. They know who we are. We have been made the dregs of society. We are seen as bastards, ones without a father because they see that they they say that our father has left us. They know who we are. They say that the father of the true Israelites have left him. That's why he has put allowed them to go through this type of bondage and he has not come back to change it as they think. But what they don't understand is what they don't know. He's coming back and he's never left us. So we've never been bastards. We've always had our father, but we have been chastised greatly and sorely but that Captivity will leave, and he's taking the captivity off of us now. It's being turned back. But as they have called us the outcast of the nations, which is who the Negro are, no homeland to call their own at the own at this present time, until the Most High Yah cleanses our homeland based off of our crying out to him, turning away from sin, turning our hearts back to him not worrying about the different issues that occur in this world as to say, I want to get my, my, uh, my riches on this earth and I want my reparations and I want to be, uh, have the things that this other nation has. And these people, I, we've been in bondage and we want this and that, and this and that. That's not what the, that's not where the, the heart and the mind of the children of Israel should be. Our only goal should be to come together, return to the Most High Yah, Turn away from our sins. Trust in his son, Yahushua Mashiach, for our, for our salvation. And his blood that cleanses us. Obey his commandments. That and do it daily. That's what the children of Israel's mind should be. That's where it should stay. It's not about this world. It's not about the things you can get from this world. We shall have it all. We, he says that we are rich. Though you are seen that you, you, it seems like you're poor. Nah, you're rich. You know, I'm paraphrasing that. We're rich. Richer than you could ever imagine the remnant of those that truly obey the Most High Yah and have a heart conversion, a heart conversion, the blood of Christ. And they seek him in spirit and in truth, in love and in righteousness. These are the ones that are his mother, his brother, his sister, those that obey him, those that trust in him, 
those that love him. You can't love him if you don't obey his, if you don't obey him. And how do you obey him? What do you obey? You obey his word. You obey his law. Did he, did he over, did he come to get rid of the law? No, he did not. He got, he, he came to fulfill the law. So when we return to the most high, Yah, we shall see a change to everything. Everything shall turn around. Blessings to you.